due to work factors, uh, do we observe in change in the structure of the language? Who will answer? Nigila question but your microphone is on. This question? Yes. Um maybe phonology of the language can be changed. Okay, it, it, it can be changed because of what? This is the question. What can be because of uh, because of different declarations maybe or inflections? Because of the inflections. Also inflections can okay, inflections. Uh, yes. Inflections of the language are changed. Inflections are related to the grammar also. Sorry? Medina, the question is inflections. Sounds are changed because of what? What influences of the of this change? What do you think? For example, the pronunciation is changed. Um, in uh, Russian, for example, uh, in early period, uh, they said different words and nowadays they are using another words. What is the reason of these changes? The history and the time, maybe. <laughs> maybe um, their development and, uh, as you know, uh, if um, we consider the family of language, we can see the difference in inflections. So we can say that uh, according to the history, according to their uh, distance of where they go, uh, we can say about the differences in language. You know, in modern English, there are a lot of French words. But when you see, um, when you see old English books, for example, uh, Dear Wolf, when you read uh, Canterbury Tales of Geoffrey Chaucer, you cannot find this French word. What is the, re what is the reason of, the, of this change, the question is? What influences at work on language? Uh, political and social events That's influences on the development of language. You are absolutely right, Nikina. Political and social events, different historical events influences the work of language, right? Yes. Mind it and don't forget, I will ask them on mission assessment and uh, don't forget to answer in this way. Well, the third question is growth and decay. When do we speak about the growth of the language and when do we speak about the decay of the language? Decay is translated as uh, gnijenie. Uh, okay. What is the growth of the language and what is the decay of the language? This is a question on introduction to linguistics. You may answer, if you can. Please try. Sabina, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, but which is the card? The, uh, development of the language, uh, growth of the language and decay of the language. What may it be? What is your supposition? No, any idea? Can you repeat the question, please? What is the growth of the language and what is the decay of the language? Yes, the, the third question. 
grace and decay. What is the grace of the language and what is the decay of the language? Any idea about that? Uh, yes, maybe it is related to uh, dead language and uh, the exist language. Yeah, very close. It's about the dead language. What is a dead language? Uh, dead language uh, are languages that uh, don't exist now because uh, they don't change and they uh, do not, how to say, uh, enrich the vocabulary hmm. now. Yes, uh, uh, memory. Uh, you remember it from introduction to linguistics? Um, no, I have read your lecture. <laughs> yes, I see. Um, well, uh, the growth of uh, the dead language is, is when the language is not used, and the living language is when the language is used. English, Uzbek, Russian are living languages. Um, Latin is a dead language. What else is a dead language? Which is not used. Dead language besides Latin. Gothic, the ancestor of the English yeah. language or Germanic language, Gothic is also a dead language, which because no one is used, uh, no one is using it. It is not used. Well, uh, the other growth and decay is the one when uh, when we, we do observe change in the structure of the language, we, we, we speak about the growth of the language. When we observe change in the structure of the language, we speak about the growth of the language. Then um, when the number of the change is very, very reduced, rarely changes are observed in the structure of the language. We speak about the decay of the language. You know, uh, these changes are closely related with the uh, employment of the language. The more language is spoken, the more changes are observed. The less the language is spoken, less uh, the changes are observed. So, uh, less the change, this is the decay of the language because number of the uh, speakers of that language is being reduced. Le less and less people are using the language, so this is a decay. More and more people speak that language, this is the growth of the language. The more people speak the language, the more changes are observed. And we speak about the growth of the language. Is it clear? Yes. <coughs> well, thank you, Sabina, for reply. <laughs> and the first question is, the principles of in the European family. Uh, is very important for introduction for, for history of the English language because it deals with the earliest period of the English language history. To understand uh, the history of the English language, we have we have uh, we must have clear ideas about what group the English language belongs to. The English language belongs to the European family of languages. And you know, in the European family of languages is divided into um, 11 principal groups. One of them is what? One of them is? Germanic. Germanic. The other is to which Russian belongs. The other is? Which Russian belongs? Hmm. Russian belongs to which group of in the European family? Balto-Slavic, yeah. Balto-Slavic, that's true. Some sources say it is Balto-Slavic, some sources say it is Slavonic or Slavonian language, etc. All of them are true. And does, in, does uh, Tajik belong to this uh, family of languages in the European? Does Tajik belong? Anyone speak Tajik? No, no one. Tajik also belongs to in the European family, and there is a group, the so-called uh, Iranian.
group of languages, and Tajik belongs to this Iranian. So you see Tajik, Russian, English belong to one and the same group. But Uzbek does not belong to this to in the European family because according to its uh, grammar, its uh, characteristics, uh, Uzbek language differs from the other uh, in the European group. That's why it's not a part of the group. Well, and the next question is discovery of Sanskrit is quite important for the history of the English language. Why? Uh, because um, it proved that uh, English language uh, belongs to in the European family. Uh, then the examples in Sanskrit prove that um, there is very close relation between Germanic languages and in the European uh, and, uh, and Indian, uh, that is Sanskrit language. Look at the table. Uh, when, uh, when it is compared with the ancient forms of the declension of the verb to be, the scientists saw similarity. Look, all, uh, modern English M, old English Elm, Gothic in, Latin sum, Greek a me. Sanskrit asmi. Look at the declension of asmi, asi, asti of Sanskrit, that is um, different forms of the word to be in singular. And sma, sta, santi, and Old English sindon, sindon, sindon. Do you see similarity? Sma, sta, santi, sindon, sindon, sindon. And old and Sanskrit asti, Greek st, Latin est, Gothic is, Modern English is, Old English is. Well, all uh, the, all these forms prove that uh, there is a relation between these languages, and there is a relation between Sanskrit and ancient European languages. And the scientists put forward the hypothesis that. Uh, that Sanskrit um, scientists put hypothesis that Sanskrit must be the parent language of all the in the European languages. So it's very important for us to know that um, the language which we are speaking now and the language which we are learning belongs to in the European family and Indian languages are part of them. Well, the next proof uh, that um, Germanic languages are related to in the European was Grimm's law. Uh, then Rasmus Kras also made contribution to this law that uh, when scientists compared in the European words with the Germanic words, they saw similarity. Compare Latin fish, fish or pes uh, with modern English fish. There is a correspondence with with pe and fe. And it is formulated by, by Jacob Grimm. That's why it's called Grimm's law. According to Grimm's law, in the European pe changed into fe in genetic languages. Or the other example, in the European pe develops into fricative fe. Example, uh, tres of Latin, Russian three, uh, and English three. Or uh, Latin Cantum, again, there is a correspondence, Latin Cantum and English hundred correspondence between pe and pe. Uh, this is one example. Another example is uh, for this and uh, part where pe corresponds to pe. So this is formulated by Jacob Green to prove that uh, in the European certain consonants correspond to Germanic certain consonants. That is, in the European pe, pe, and uh, and pe, pe, sorry, pe, pe, and pe are found in Germanic languages as uh, fricative consonants. That is, plosive corresponds to fricative, like pe, uh, fe, pe, 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 pe. Uh, this is the correspondence of the sound. In the European pe, 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 Germanic languages, pe, pe, pe. Pe, uh, pe of Indo European uh, in Germanic languages appears as pe, or pe of Indo European uh, in Germanic languages appears as pe. 
or uh, what else? A pair of Indo-European corresponds to Germanic pair, pair. And this regulation is called as Grimm's law to prove that in the European, in the European second continent corresponds to Germanic second continent. In details, you will read about uh, in uh, the text of the lecture. If you have any questions about what is still this, uh, I will be happy to answer your questions. This is a slide. Uh, another name for the Green's law is the first consonant shift. Uh, consonant shift is a change of the consonant. Uh, many times consonants are changed in genetic languages, and this is the first one. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? No, any? Okay. Don't mind about those who are passing behind me. Uh, if you don't have any questions, these are self control questions. Please uh, read them and uh, be ready to answer them because in midterm assessment, you will, have, you will be having these questions. Any questions, I will be happy to answer. Uh, no matter whether it is by Telegram or by um, Nmodo, uh, book.us, or during the um, what's this uh, video conference. Shall we finish our lecture? Hello? Anyone here? With your permission. <laughs> Sabina, do you have a question? No, no. Hmm. Well, uh, mind that our uh, lecture is being recorded and you, may, you will find it in uh, nmoodle, uh, nmoodle If you don't have any question, we'll finish it. Thank you for participation. Uh, take care, don't be ill, uh, mind that uh, coronavirus is somewhere around us, that's why always uh, keep distance, always use masks, uh, which are quite uh, effective way of protecting yourself from coronavirus. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.